Hey guys, this is Ishmael Amte. Today I'm talking about a project from my DIY archive. So this is a project I did about three years ago. And this happens to be a soundproof boot which I did work on. Yes, that, that was about three years ago. So for the why I had to do this project was simply because I did live in a compound house um, with a couple of tenants and you know, living with people in a house, sometimes the noise level and the rest, you don't have control over them. So um, that was one of the reasons why I decided I was going to build a soundproof boot so that I can use that to record my um, video tutorials anytime in the day. So that was actually one of my main reasons. And also it wasn't really ideal for me to, you know, be waking up at dawn and then be making videos. It wasn't really working out for me. So I needed a solution to that as well. So yes, I did work on a soundproof boot. That was about three years ago. And I must say it did turn out very well. Uh, unfortunately, as of now, it's no longer there. I had to um, demolish it to do something else. But I would like to share with you uh, how this um, project, you know, went, how I went about every aspect of it. I'll share with you the um, things that was involved and the cost, how long it took and everything. So without not talking for that, let's go ahead and then get into it. So to get started, the size of the soundproof boot was um, six feet wide, and then the sides were four feet, four feet each, and then the height was um, about eight feet. So that was the actual size that I used for um, working on this. Now for um, this particular video, I'm going to break it in a couple of parts, and I'll also be using a PowerPoint presentation to make it easier for me, because this was a project I did work on like about three years ago. So I need to, you know, actually refresh my memory a bit on what I did at what point and, and everything. So um, I'm going to be talking about the tools I used. I also talk a, a bit about um, personal protective equipment I did use, as well as the materials I used and how I went about the process and then the finishing of the entire project. So um, let's go ahead and then take a look at, you know, the tools I, I use and working on um, this particular project. At this point, I'll walk you through some of the tools I did use and working on the soundproof boots. So um, let's go through the tools here. So the first one I'll talk about is a cross cut saw, which I did use and um, cutting boots um, as part of the process. I also used a square to check especially the corners or the edges of um, the wood, sometimes maybe even in marking the wood, I did use the square to do that and also I have a measuring tip which I did use and measuring out um, the sizes of wood I was going to cut and then I also have a pencil here which I used and I'm um, doing some marking to, to mark out uh, points where maybe I'm supposed to cut maybe I'm supposed to drill whatever I was supposed to do um, I, I use the pencil in doing that of course I have a hammer here which I do I did use a nailing at some point and then I have pincers at some point um, there was a need for pincers to be able to remove some unwanted nails and the screwdriver to also assist drive some screws into um, wood and then i have a level here so this is a small size level which also helped and you know checking how straight um, the, the whole thing was next i have a drilling machine so i use the drilling machine and drilling through the wood at some point to be able to create um hole for the um, screws i was going to use and sometimes even um, to pass something through it. So that was what I used the drilling machine for. And then of course the drilling machine works with bits. So um, I have the drilling bits here. And then um, this is a screw machine. So, you know, all these tech devices to help make um, work a bit easier. So at some point there was a need for me to use screwing uh, machine to be able to drive some screws into um, the wood. And then I also had to use a, um, is a scrapper or scrapper? Scrapper, wow. I don't really know the right name. So to also um, do some filler work. So I'll, I'll talk about all these points at um, certain parts of the video. And then I have a roller here, which also assisted in painting the entire um, boot. And yeah, so the ruler was working in hand with the paintbrush. And then I have a cutting knife here to cut out some materials at some point. And then I have the staple gun, which I had to use to staple um, you know, some points. Uh, I think I use that in stapling the acoustic foam. So 
we talk um, about that. So I also had to use some protective equipment, which is very important, especially when you're carrying out some of these projects. So um, I have a face uh, shield, um, a goggles here, and a nose mask, and then um, the um, gloves. So nose mask, of course, for my nose. My nose is a very sensitive one. So I mostly don't like to have it come in contact with either dust or strong, strong scent and some other things that is going to cause it to you know, sneeze and the rest. So, um, I use goggles to pr protect my eyes at um, you know doing the process, and then also use the hand gloves to prevent any injuries on my um, hand. So aside that, now let's take a look at the materials I then use um, to carry out the entire process. So for the materials, the first thing was wood. So for the wood, I used um, about forty pieces of one. Um, is it? I use about. Um, 40 pieces of one inch by three. So it was one inch by three inches, um, um, just an um, wood that I did use for that. Uh, it was actually not available. So I had to buy, I think about two by um, three or so, and then I had it divided into two for that. And then the next one is screws. So I use um, two inches screws uh, for the entire process. And uh, the screws were to hold the woods together because I didn't want it to um, you know, I had in mind that someday I was definitely going to remove this so um, to be able to make it easier to remove it of course the screws were much preferable compared to that of the um, nails and yes there was, there was some points I had to use nails so I used nails um, at working at some point of the entire process so we'll take a look at that shortly and then so the nails I had one inch nails as well as three inches nails which I used at different points of the entire process I also have um, corner brackets, so for the whole thing to be very firm, there was a need for me to use corner brackets at the edges or the corners of the um, wood. So I use corner brackets to do that. And then plywood, yes, at some point I had to use plywood to cover um, certain surface. So I'll talk about that shortly. And then paint, so I had to paint everything after I was done. And yes, so the staple gun, which I mentioned earlier, works with the staple paint. So. I used that as well and then I also had to use some cloth um, to cover certain surface of the entire um, boot and yes we have the acoustic foams or acoustic panels which I also use as part of the process so yes and then we have the paint spray which I also did use um, in spring and we have the door hinges, uh, hinges which I used um, to you know um, fix the door so that I could open and then close as well as the door lock to be able to you know lock up the place in case I don't I want to you know abstain from the tower world yes so and yes there was also uh, I also use a woolen carpet at some point I think okay so I have a Patrick's box this was um, used for the electrical works it came uh, with the light switch so I use a light switch as well and then we have the LED light which I fixed on top of the boot as well as i used a flexible cable for the lighting system and then um, i also used um, that was about i think 2.5 mm cable for um, the um, socket and um, yeah i also did use egg crate as part of the process and yeah so let me just walk you through the process so what you see here is the base of the boot so as i said earlier the size of the boot um, the width is six feet so as you can see at this point it's six feet and then we have four feet um, that was the sides the left side as well as the right side and then you have um, one feet um, that was the joint the inner joint to be able to hold it firm so uh, that's how I went about the uh, base so I did cut the woods into different sizes and then I just screw them together so at this um, joint here I use the screw machine to screw the uh, screws um, into it and then after that I use the corner brackets to hold them to make them firm so this is how I went about the um, boot now the good thing is I'm going to make this um, powerpoint available for you to download in case you want to also um, you know apply something similar to this you can go about to do that so that was how I went about the boot then I went ahead to work on the frame itself so that's the um, side frames so um, if you take a look at the measurement over here, the six feet was just throughout the entire process. That was to the sides, and then the height. So the height was um, eight feet. I think this was an error here, so I got correct that this was eight feet. That was the height, and then one feet, of course. The one feet was throughout, 
the eight feet was also throughout, the six feet was throughout. Now at this point, was the doorway so that was 30 um, inches so i created a 30 inches uh, pop so i could walk into the boot from there so basically this is how i went about the uh, frame now if you take a very good look at this point you notice that there was um, a nail which what i used in here so at some point when i was trying to fix all the frames together i had to screw the frames uh, separately before fixing them together so I at some point was uh, very difficult using the screws, um, the screw machine because the um, the beat I was using or the screw I think uh, yeah was not really working well with the screw, so it was very difficult at some point driving the screws into it. So I had to improvise a bit and use um, nails for the sides. That was like the main frame to be able to hold the frame. So I used nails for that. And um, the next thing is yeah, so you have to um, I think a proper view from the other side so you see it properly. So um, yeah, this is supposed to be eight feet. Sorry, that's not eight four. And this is um, one feet. This is six feet. That was the, the back before I did the front part. So yeah, that's still pictures of um, it. And um, yes, yeah, so this is how it looked. Now after doing the sides, I did the. Um, the base I had to use a board I think well that was what I bought to do that so I think I used about um, you know I bought about either two boards that I had it cut into smaller parts so the sizes were um, six feet by four feet um, yeah that was the base and I had to cut the boards into smaller pieces to be able to um, fit that so I think each um, size that was the width of the um, board was like about 30 um, uh, is it 30? I think about six. Um, that's six. Well, six or twelve. No, I think it should be twelve inches. Yes. So that was that's that was yeah. That was twelve inches for um, the size of the distance there. But so I had to cut them together to be able to make the entire base of the wood. And then I went ahead to apply the plywood. So the plywood at this point, this was when I used the one inch um, nails to be able to. I uh, nailed the plywood to all the sides, um, the sides of the boot. So, as you can see, this is beginning to take shape and a bit. So, we started from here, the very base where there was nothing. I had to fix the base together. Went ahead to do the sides, and then after the sides, went ahead to do the um, base. That was the um, fixing of the boards there, and then finally apply the plywood. So, if you take a look inside, you notice that. Now the plywood was applied um, applied to the back and so it means there were some spaces in between there that I had to fill. So it was then I had to use the air crate. So air crate um, happens to be a very um, good, um, should I say, uh, yeah, it can be used for insulation. But at this point I wasn't applying insulation. I was actually looking at preventing um, noise from the outside um, from getting inside. So I was using this to be able to aid and sound proof and so Air crate happens to be a good absorber of um, you know sound. Uh, yes, yeah, so I use air crates to uh, fill in the spaces in between um, the plywood outside and then the inside um, part. So after doing that, and then I nailed um, plywood to cover the top of the air crate. So there was air crates in in between the plywood outside and then the plywood inside, just as I did for the um, container using the insulation. Um, that's the um, acoustic foam to serve as the insulation um, material in between the metal as well as the plywood so just as a, I did the same for this and then I went ahead to apply some corner um, wood to be able to you know uh, make it like you know very firm so if you take a very good look here uh, and even at the top you notice that I did apply some or I nailed some wood to that point as well as all the edges the corner um, of the um, but and then after that I went ahead to apply some filler. I did some filler work so applied filler, um, filler to the corners as well as put outside and then the inside and after doing that I went ahead to work on my so the electrical system actually came before the filler work so I must say so working because before I had to do the covering I had to make sure that I had done the electrical work so for the um, light there was already lights in the room so I just had to connect from the light and then make it come inside so I was just using um, the existing light and then I had to fix um, a switch for it I didn't want to, um, wanted to use the same switch for the other lights but the other light was actually the main switch so once you turn that on 
and I come to turn this on before this will come on. But if you turn that off and you turn this on, this wasn't going to come on. Now, I actually also did um, the electrical works myself. Yes, I, I, have, I seem to have knowledge about these things. So I did that myself. And then, yeah, as part of the electrical um, works, I also did work on the socket. Now, the socket, I actually created an extension board where I was just going to pass a cable into it. So I was going to use So there was no need for me to create um, like a, a switch on it and um, a socket on it on just I did for the container um, project. So I did um, create an extension board with an existing, you know, um, uh, socket as well as cables and then the uh, switch for that. And then after doing that, yes, of course, I had to fix the door. So the door also, I just applied the same process for the booth itself. I used the plywood, but before the plywood, I had to create a frame with the wood that I was using there. Um, one by three inches um, wood to create the frame. After that, filled it with the egg crate, and then after filling it, I applied plywood to both sides of it. And then I went I had to fix it with the help of the inches at the side of the, uh, the path I created for the door. So I think after fixing the door, that was when I actually did the filler works. And then after doing the filler works at some point, I went ahead to paint. So I I wanted it to be a bright space. Of course, I I and you know brighter spaces. So I went ahead to paint with um, white. Now for the choice of paint, at this point, I use acrylic paint instead of emotion paint. So um, I was looking at acrylic because it was wood. I didn't want a situation whereby I was going to use motion where I had to paint a lot of times. But it actually did prove me wrong because the acrylic, I had to paint lots of times before I was able to get a white the way I wanted it. So that was um, one, you know, um, should I say, lesson I did learn there that it's not always that you get acrylic work the way you want it. So this white was actually an acrylic white paint that I, so as you can see, I did go about four coats, different coats to be able to um, get that properly done. And then after that, I went ahead to apply or cover certain parts of the boot with the material. There shall I purchase this material um, to do that. So I use that to cover both the top as well as the um, sides to, you know, to create some nice you know, um, space. And then after doing that, I went ahead to cover the top part. So this um, white part with the acoustic panels that I um, had bought, um, yes, for the project. So um basically yes i think that was that's just about it yeah um so this is how the entire um soundproof boots actually did turn out um for the duration it didn't take me so much time to get this done i think it took close to about three weeks to have this done because i wasn't working continuously every day i was working um at some point that i did have um, free time and also with regard to cost um I must say that I this spent close to about two thousand CDs to have everything done. So the two thousand CDs did cater for the cost of the materials, um, the cost of um, I think it was just the material that I had to buy um, for the tools. I already um, had the tools, so there was no need for me to buy um, any tools to work on this. So it was just the wood, the nails, the acoustic foams, the egg crate and um, the electrical stuff as well as the material that i use for covering as well as the paint so um basically this is how my soundproof um, project did go unfortunately i don't seem to have uh, a full picture of it maybe i might have to check to see if i can include that when i'm editing this video so you get to um see it but yes uh, i did actually serve its purpose i started using it to record um my video tutorials and yeah for like for about a year or two uh, before i had to actually demolish it let me see if i can get pictures of um, uh, some of the pictures um, so yeah so if you see the circuit over here this so i just had to create the extension um socket so that i could just attach it to this and then uh now set so the egg creates let me just keep going so i see if i can come across something different so this was the um, ceiling before i covered it with the cloth and um, yeah so that was my next um, that i had to put it in there so this was like a, uh, because i had to cover the sides so this wasn't up to six feet it was like five and something um, feet i fixed that in there there was space at the back which i could put 
um, chair in there. That sits, and then I had my office, uh, my tutorial stuff fixed um, there. So yeah, that was the base. I had to use the carpet um, to cover the the board that I nailed in there. I don't think I have pictures of um, the setup that I had. Uh, yes, okay. This is one of the setups. So I had my monitor there, and then my stand, my microphone stand, and then I think uh, yeah. So that was the seat. Um, yeah, my chair, and yeah. So that was the monitor. I think uh, yeah. So okay. So one thing I actually also did forget to make mention of was the um, this silicon which I use in applying or the application of the foam. I didn't want. I used this um, the staple gun at some point when the um, silicone was failing me so the silicone was actually not so fast so I went ahead to use the staple gun to just staple the foam to the um, plywood so that's that's how I went about um, that's that's the um, switch over there so in, in, in the end it, it did turn out very well and uh, I was very impressed I was actually able to work on this all by myself I think at the, there was at some point, I did get assistance of a friend who did come by. That was like about two times. And then um, we applied, was it, uh, we did something. I can't remember exactly what we did, but uh, I think I got assistance from a friend for two times. And um, I went ahead to take care of the other aspects of the entire project. So yeah, this is basically um, how I went about building my sound, soundproof um, boots, which was very useful for me where during the daytime, like any time of the day, I could just go in there and then record. Now, one question I'm sure you may have is, how was I dealing with ventilation? So, the good thing um, was that the room had an air condition in it. So, um, I did turn on the air condition at some point. Once it, you know, has the room very cold, I opened the door a bit to be able to allow some, you know, um, good air condition into it and then close it and then because the air condition sometimes was still on um, and the environment is cold and it wasn't warm in there so that's how i actually did go about ventilation because i didn't create any um vents there to be able to get air so i had to you know be doing this manually by opening the door at some point to allow air in i think maybe uh, if you are looking at doing something like this you might probably be thinking about how you go about that maybe you could fix a ceiling fan which is not going to be noisy to distract or distort whatever you be working on. So that's how I did go about um, getting air into the space. Um, so basically this is the end of um, this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. In case you are new to this channel, kindly go ahead and hit on the subscribe button. And then don't forget to hit on the bell so that anytime there's a new video, you get to see it. So if you have any questions or anything that you think I might have not addressed in this particular video, feel free to um, reach out or maybe post it in the comment section and I'll gladly respond to it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.